Hello, good morning. Good morning, Allison. How are you today? I'm good, Leah. How are you? Good. Uh, I've missed you. I know. I'm really happy to be here. Not that I'm not always happy to be here, but I'm very happy to see you again. I know. I haven't seen you in two weeks. I know. It's really, it, I've gotten used to seeing you every week. I know. That, I'm going to really miss it when we stop doing this someday because normally we're not going to do this forever <laughs> what we're not going to do this forever when we stop doing this someday well hopefully not but you know i know <laughs> I, I, I don't have a crystal ball as much as i, I want to be able to see the future and know what's going to come i right. don't <laughs> well, if you did have a crystal ball and an ability to see the future wouldn't your very first question be how long are we going to do <laughs> days with librarians not yes. and, anything else and um when will we get like Hi, Gary, like Hi. a production studio and like people to help us a, prep and a glam squad lighting. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. So I did buy new light bulbs. Um, I don't know if I said this on air last week, but I know I told Leah that slowly but surely all the light bulbs and the lighting thing above me had been burning out and I was certain and it was flickering. The final one was flickering. So I was certain that I was going to be ghostly and have, you know, this dramatic on and off lightning. So while I was off, I did buy new light bulbs and uh, that was actually, it took a very, very long time for me to figure out what ones to get because they need to be dimmable. This is like a dimmable thing, which is yeah. helpful for what we do here that I don't have to have yeah. just one level of light. I still am in darkness or brightness. You can adjust it somewhat though. <laughs> you can adjust it somewhat. So, but I did, and I was getting frustrated. I was like, forget it. Maybe I don't even need light bulbs, uh, but I got them anyway, so. I, uh, I was, but when I was reading on the package, like the different types of light that they provide, I was like, you know, what would be best for online <laughs> television or whatever? That's where everything, every decision is made around that now. It's like, what are you gonna wear today? I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, Cause like that one day I, we got on the camera and you were like, Leah, you need to change. <laughs> I was wearing this like peach colored top that made me look naked. <laughs> <laughs> On camera, I was like, are you gonna? I was like, well, maybe you, like if you put enough stuff around it, it will be obvious that you're wearing clothing. But the way that it looks right now, it looks like you're not wearing clothing. She's like, in person, it doesn't really look like the color of my skin. I'm like, I know, but on camera, things happen and. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm very glad you told me because I wouldn't want, you know, the library thing to get like taken down because someone no. thinks it's inappropriate. I know. Yeah. There's like a big Facebook like banner across like this video removed for explicit content or something. And yeah, I, I don't oh. think Becky would appreciate that. <laughs> no. Yeah. So we do have to think about those things. So I got like the daylight. I don't know. I just, it, anyway, but yes, I was off last week. I had a really lovely time doing just like, I didn't go anywhere. It was definitely a staycation, but I just kind of, I had some things I wanted to get done, but it was nothing pressing. I saw family. Um, I, best, where you can just yeah, relax. it was really nice. I woke up, I know this is, you're going to be like, no, this stopped being nice, but I woke up early most days, like, but naturally I didn't mm -hmm. set an alarm or anything, but it was just, my rhythm like worked um and yeah. so that was really nice because i could go out in the yard before it was blisteringly hot because it was yes. very hot a lot last week um and so i could go out there when it was tolerable and pull mm -hmm. some weeds and stuff and then go inside for the rest of the day yes yeah that um, is nice yeah another thing i did is i got i went to tj maxx and i was also uh, i was thinking you know, when people actually go somewhere on vacation, they bring back like saltwater taffy or like the chocolate from the local candy shop or whatever. And I was like, some hmm, kind of shit. souvenir. Yeah, for, for their work, their coworkers. And I was like, hmm, I guess I should get something from the checkout line at TJ Maxx or maybe a bag of chips from the Meyer, the front <laughs> part of Meyer, because I didn't go anywhere or do anything. But I went to TJ Maxx and I got this notebook that I'm using now to contain all my lattes ideas. So we can't quit doing this until I've gotten my use out of this notebook. Although it was only $3. Um, so <laughs> um, but it has these like ostriches on the cover and then like shiny gold dots. And I know you'll like it. And when I saw that it, I was very like, cute. I know I need this. What can I use it for? And then I was like, I, lattes is actually a great thing to use it. So hopefully I will stop keeping my notes. I haven't transcribed because we write down a lot of ideas. We talk yes. about a lot of things and we don't talk about them on the show. So I have like, keep this paper because it has something we might talk about in the future. So I've got like, 
these little scraps and I have like backs of envelopes and stuff. And so I'm going to try to get those on a page. It's just like a dump and then keep it's like with bullet journaling as Leah has exactly. done, done. If you ever want to watch them, um, <laughs> you can, then I'll move over the things we don't talk about till the next week and right. maybe just keep me a little bit more organized future so that you maybe don't wait two weeks to put up your your we talked about these books well, on. <laughs> unfortunately they're still on the paper here which doesn't get them onto the computer any faster but if i can bring this and i can just type this up and maybe maybe at some point i can even try to just do it on the computer but as we said before you when you and i were talking I am a millennial, which means I don't own a printer. So I can't, yeah. <laughs> typing things up and then printing them out for myself doesn't really work, but I could do them like in a document I send to myself. I don't know, just, yeah. but this is cute. So this is what we're doing. I know, I'm, I'm very torn because like, I love like using technology and yeah. like just not wasting paper. But at the same mm -hmm. time, if I'm on the computer and it's on the computer, I can't access both things at the same time. Right. So. Yes, that's because that's the thing about doing this show. If I want to talk about these books, I can't have it up. I would need another I'm monitor. Need and I want a glam squad before I want a second monitor, honestly. If you're looking <laughs> for someone to donate something to our show, I want it. And to also, when you've got a second monitor, you're looking at that and not at the camera. And not at the show. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's a problem. Anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> what did you do last week? Um. What did I do last week? Um, I had another fender bender. Um, this is the third time I have been hit. I've had a car accident. Well, actually it's the fourth time, but the one was just so minor. I think oh. the guy's foot slipped off the brake when we were in line at Dairy Queen. So it was- Not it much was, speed there. <laughs> no, not at all. Oh. Uh, but this is like the fourth accident I've had in this car. No, it's a new car. I mean, like, it this was, car is cursed. It was a new vehicle, too. It wasn't yes, like brand new. Yeah. I'm sorry and to hear that. I, I'm never going to do that again because apparently that's very bad luck for me. Um, like, I had, <laughs> it's like once a year someone hits me and it's I'm never sorry. my fault. Like, right. I, I remember the one from the, yeah. I was standing still. I remember the one where you got hit from the side. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember what year, what year's accident that was, but mm -hmm. that one was was pretty crummy. And that was, I would call that more than a fender bender. Yeah, that one was. Um, um, a bender. <clears throat> but luckily like no one was hurt. So that's oh, like- yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, right. We're, we're talking on the sliding scale of like accidents where no one was hurt. So already we're very grateful it was just right. that. Yeah. But that was like a, your door and everything. Yeah. Yeah, like they had to replace panels and everything. It was so cosmetic damage, but still. Right, I know. <laughs> this is like the third time. And it's just, I really think that I am cursed. Mary says that I have inherited her car luck. Um, yeah. I'm ready to pass it on to someone else. If someone else wants it, contact me and I will. Now I'm kind of concerned. Like we all know that I need a new car and it's not happening anytime soon. I'm going to drive it into the ground, but now I'm concerned that somehow it will transfer to me. <laughs> um, we, I, 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 my sister actually bought me a, she made me a big uh, sage thing. <laughs> she had a dream about um, creepy Nick is like sucking my energy and he's like, um, yeah, like there's a dark force around me so she made me a sage thing so i could smudge my house and i thought you know maybe i'll smudge my car too yeah why not just, <laughs> just get rid of whatever bad juju i got yeah. Right now. so yeah i'm sorry to hear that it, it's just that's what's going on that's just my life right now i'm sorry the other thing that i did last week um i did achieve what i set out to achieve well so sort of i'll explain okay. i did i read the great gatsby I finished that Saturday, the first Saturday that I was off. Um, I read that <laughs> in one sitting. And then, and I just, I just like it so much and I can't even put it into words because it is just depressing romance, but I just, I like it. And then um, I started to read Nick, the one I told you about, but it was very boring. I gave it 50 pages. <laughs> and 
the person who had told me that they didn't like it was right in that you didn't really, it didn't feel like reading The Great Gatsby. It yeah. didn't feel super related to that. And then on top of that, since it, it wasn't something I wanted to read anyway. Like I wasn't engaged with it on its own and then it didn't yeah. really feel like it was Gatsby related. So then I just kind of petered out. So I did decided not to read that one. Um, okay. But then, but like I said, I gave it the 50 pages and I just wasn't into it. And then I did read Cho The Chosen and the Beautiful. The author's last name is Vo, V-O. Um, and I really, really, really liked that. That was told from Jordan Baker's perspective, who is okay. Daisy's friend, the golfer. And the it, what? Nick talks about how well she lies. Yes, and that she's <laughs> careless, she's a bad driver. Um, she's tall and thin and um, maybe cheats at golf and maybe cheats at golf. Um, <laughs> and, but the Nick says they're all careless people, but yes, he's the one that she, she's the one that he dates yeah. throughout the great Gatsby and um, throughout that summer. And this book has an element of like urban, I would call it maybe like urban fantasy, even though it's not necessarily an urban mm -hmm. setting in that um, there's like, there's like demons there. You don't see the demons, but there's like references to like demons and a sort of demonic situation in the same way that there's like bootleggers. There's also okay. people who kind of like sell their soul okay. to the devil or to demons. And it's not, there's nothing else about them really, but it's just this sort of like fantasy underworld that exists okay. and can yeah. kind of be tapped into. And then there's also a bit of magic to it um, as far as like crafting things out of paper that can then come to life. And um, so there's that, which I know sounds like nothing like The Great Gatsby, but it is put in there in such a way that it feels authentic to the story. Reading the characters in Vo's book feels like reading the characters in Fitzgerald's book, which I think is incredible. This is exactly what I would want an adaptation, for lack of a better word, to be, even though it's from a different character's perspective. It's what I would want an adaptation to be because it just, it feels like it's building it's giving something new to the book that already exists, but building on it in a way that still feels like authentic, even though yeah. it's obviously completely different. And there's something about like that, you know, 20s era decadence that, yeah. you, you know, it, it seems like plausible that people sold their souls in order right. to, to achieve yes. this. And to have yeah. that, that freedom and that yes. no care attitude that these women right. seem to have. There's just That's a really good carelessness point. about them. And yeah. You know, there no worries. It's it yes. just to see to have that kind of existence, you yeah. would have sold your soul. So that's that, a, I like that. That's a really good point. And like some of the dial, I mean, a lot of it, the scenes where Jordan is with Gatsby and Daisy and Nick, um, a lot of those are word for word from okay. the great Gatsby. Like she has put those scenes in. There's a couple of scenes I think where she may include Jordan when Jordan wasn't there in the book book. And then of course there's plenty of scenes of Jordan and Gatsby, Jordan and Nick that don't appear in Fitzgerald's book. Right. Um, but it just, the, like I said, the language and the interaction, it feels, it still feels authentic to the original, mm -hmm. even if it's something completely different. So I do recommend that if you're a fan of the book or just a fan of how people reinterpret things, I really did like this. Nick just kind of fell sort of flat for me. I see we have a comment from Patricia who says that she gives a book 100 pages, which good for you. That feels generous to me. It was hard to hard to make it to 50 and something that I don't like. And then if she doesn't like it by then, she stops reading it, but very rarely gives up on a book. Um, I commend you for that. I definitely will stop books because I just feel like there's too many to read. Yes. I don't have enough time. My to be read pile is much too large. If I'm not, if I'm not mm -hmm. enjoying it, I usually stop. One of the books that I read this last week, um, I found myself like, reading it as much as I possibly could mm -hmm. in order to get through it very quickly yeah. because the subject matter disturbed me. Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> it was um, Fiona Barton's uh, The Widow. It's okay. it's a couple years old now. Um, mm -hmm. She's got a, a couple books. And um, I think this was like the first one in this series. And it's like... I don't, I think they're like very loosely related with like the reporter, sure. the reporters type of common character. I think, don't quote me on that because I've only read the yeah. first book. Um, yeah. But in this character, there's um, a two-year-old child that goes missing 
and um, it's told from the perspective of like the widow of the main sub suspect, the newspaper mm -hmm. reporter, the mother has, she, you get her perspective just a couple of times um, mm -hmm. and the detective working the case. Like those are like the main characters from the perspective that you get. Yeah. And it's very disturbing reading about a child going missing and like, like the world that they suspect, you know, kidnapped her it, mm -hmm. it was it was yeah it was i just wanted it over it was a you minor read it. It it was very like well you written didn't you know, quit. <laughs> the, the the story yeah. like the way it all came together and like <clears throat> and like when they have a suspect like they think it's him but they can't prove it and it, yeah. it just was very interesting it was a very good story but i just found it so disturbing that i just wanted it over I, I liked it and I wanted to know what happened and I wanted to yeah. know how it all got sorted, yeah. but I just wanted it. <laughs> yeah. I actually had a book like that this week too, that I'm reading for a book club that I'm in. It's called Verity by Colleen Hoover. I think mm -hmm. um, it has a lot of holds right now for reasons unknown to me. Cause I think it came out two years ago, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, just, I don't know if it's being adapted into something or if it's just one of those slow burns of a books where people mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah. word of mouth or whatever. Um, and it's it's not something I normally read. It's very it's a thriller mystery type of thing. Um, it just it, there's a, there's a lot of romantic element as well. Um, and I, but it was for this book club pick, and it was scaring me so much. There was so much creepiness to it. Like there was just I, I won't get into it because of so much since it does have a long hold list. I imagine there might be people yeah. watching this who have been wanting to read it. So I won't actually say very much about it. But there were creepiness factors and just like imagery and like weirdness. I don't like things when that are like just a little bit off. Like something that's like way off is less scary it's like to me. Imaginary. Than yeah, something that's like a little bit off is like real freaky to me. Yeah. Um, there's also a sleepwalking element which really creeped me out. And so I was a similar thing where I was like, well, I don't want to keep myself up reading something scary, but I also just want it to be the scariness to be done. Yeah. And if I'm going to be up worried about it or up reading it, I kind of just rather be up reading it and finish it and be put this in my past. Yes. <laughs> and Lily said that she read that book by Fiona Barton too, The Widow. Oh. And she felt the same way about it. Really? So, yeah. There you go. Like, like I said, it's a very good book. It just yeah. uncomfortable yeah. subject matter. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, so you you power know, I was through. Gonna tell you. Yeah. You you mentioned that you were reading the Gate Great Gatsby. You were yeah. having a Great Gatsby week, and I felt like I should do that. Like yeah. that way, I have something to talk to you about. No, <laughs> we, don't, we don't have enough. We don't have enough conversation pieces without exactly. having the same book. But I picked it up, and I am rereading it now. Oh, I read it when I was in middle school, so. Yeah. I was I was really surprised at how much of it I had forgotten. But then I thought about it and I'm like, Leah, it's been 30 years since you read this book. And um the fact you remember anything at all is probably you have read five thousand books since then. So yes. yeah. You don't yeah. have to, the fact that you don't remember anything is is okay. So yeah. it's it's like reading it for the first time again now because it has been so long. Yeah. Um I'm very much enjoying it. I'm very close to the end. Yeah. Um but yes, so yeah. who are you reading or listening? I'm actually listening to it. Narrates it was my question. Is it somebody in, that we know, or is it just a generic narrator? Let me see. Well, and I'm everybody's known to somebody. Yeah, not to diminish <laughs> this narrator, but just I didn't know sometimes they like pull someone in and like featuring. Yeah, or a classic book. Sorry, I had to put you on the spot. That's <laughs> it. It's not giving me the information. Well, I think um, you would remember if it was like, it's narrated by someone famous. It's, uh. It's fine. It's clearly not narrated by a celebrity or you would remember. No, it's, I always have trouble in Libby finding the information about the book that I'm currently reading. Yeah. I click on the wrong things. Yeah, you're you're much more hoopla. I am trained, so to speak. Um, it's really fine. I'm, I was going to help you look it up, but I'm not going to. We both. Read by <laughs> Anthony. Anthony. I, I don't know who that what that last name. No, is. me neither. That's totally fine. But he's really great narrator. Okay, good. 
That's good. Well, I'm glad that Sorry. you're enjoying it and you're not finding it boring or you're not like now suddenly I like Allison less because she enjoys this book so much. Like I said, it's just kind of a depressing romance. It is. And I feel like I relate to different people at different times. And even though I know there's just, I know it's a very simple story. It just is. But for some reason I like it. <laughs> it's interesting to me, like, how little we know about the guy who's telling the story. I mean, like we, we hear some of his story, but yeah. it's really not about him at all. The, the guy who's telling the story. So that I yeah. think is very interesting. And that's why that other person wrote that book, Nick. And I don't know why it wasn't interesting to me because it's, it starts with his time in world war one. Like that's mm -hmm. where the book begins. And like, even that should have been interesting, but for some reason I just could not, the way it was written, I just couldn't connect. And I wouldn't have, like I said, I wouldn't have read it if it weren't about Nick. And then I just, I don't know. I was like, it's vacation and I want to read that other book. And I did read the graphic novel as well. The pictures are very pretty. And I think that that's one of those things that's like, just for a fan of the story would be cool to look yeah. at or to own. Um, the art from that time is, the art that goes. I know, really yes. I like that. I actually bought a notebook. <laughs> yesterday with right. that echo style uh, yeah you were gold. inspired yes you also like you like the gold so much i feel like it's right up your alley very much so i actually had some things to talk about that i'm going to be disappointed if i don't get to talk about okay but i also don't want to dominate our conversation and maybe i can talk about some of them next week if we run out of time okay. but just a couple months ago i went a little like click happy on some of the websites where i get advanced copies of ebook mm -hmm. and they were being very generous with giving them out <laughs> and so suddenly i had all these books that i want to have done my due diligence and read them and like leave a review because they've given them to me as a librarian and i want to you know especially with people who are like first time authors yeah. or yeah. newer authors you, i don't know it just seems like the right thing to do and um but just then suddenly the release dates come up and you're like, oh gosh, I've got to read this. I've got to read this. So for the past couple of months, I've kind of been reading a lot of those. Yeah. And they've been coming out. Several of them are coming out in July and August. And so I wanted to mention them. And, okay. and you had some books to talk about too, I think, right? Yeah. So if we, if we run out, we run out. But I'll start then with the July ones. Okay. Because those are, they are... You, all of these can be placed on hold in our catalog. They are at that, either they're already out or they're going to be out. Um, the first one I was gonna talk about is called The Very Nice Box. And it has two authors, Eve Blackman and Laura Blackett, um, which is unusual to have, it's just one book. It's not two perspectives, it's not two stories, it's just one book, but with two authors. And um, I would describe this book as like, definitely quirky, but warm um and the main character is named ava and she may be somewhat on the spectrum the autism spectrum but she also is having clearly having difficulty coping with and recovering from the a traumatic car accident that killed her family and so she um you know there a lot of it is that as well but she's her personality is definitely very reserved and she just likes things to be a very certain way and um she that works very well for her because she's an engineer at a company called Stada, which is like Ikea. Okay. It's like a Scandinavian furniture company. And so she's an engineer there. And so having everything, the project, her pet project that she's been working on is something called the very nice box. And it's just, it's a box you can keep things in and it has like these special features, but it's just a box. And um, so like I said, her personality really works well there until a new, um, like a new boss or supervisor comes in and is trying to like change the, change the workplace culture. And um, so she's, and there's like so much like of like today's like buzzword workplace culture at those like tech startups and stuff, so much of that in there. And then also hilarious, wonderful on point Scandinavian furniture names. Um, like the, the authors do such a good job of keeping those like consistent and like mm -hmm. very typical. Um, and so this new supervisor, she also ends up kind of becoming attracted to. And so then that kind of goes through it, but it is a very unusual story. It is not a romance. Um, like I said, it's quirky and it was just uh, unlike most things that I have read. So it was fun. Again, I believe this is a debut. 
novel for both of the authors. And okay. so um, if you're looking for something just a little bit different, um, I would recommend The Very Nice Box. The Very Nice Box. That's such an unusual title. It you is. That, I'm like, I don't remember that title. So. No. no. <laughs> and that's one that I think I would remember. But. Right, right. So that's my first thing, and it is out in July, so you're good to good to go. Okay. My um, first one is, it's out in August. Um, it's called Dark Roads by... Um, Chevy Stevens. Okay. I haven't read this book yet. It's one of those books mm -hmm. that I'm like anxious for it to come mm -hmm. out. Chevy Stevens is one of those authors that I just, I love their stuff. Okay. Um, it's very like um, suspenseful, dark. Um, her first book was uh, Still Missing. It's mm -hmm. the story of this woman who um, gets, she gets kidnapped and held captive by this guy for several years um okay. but it was really interesting because like she wrote that book and i had read the reviews and i ordered the book and then between the time that i ordered it and the time that it came out because sometimes they're like months yeah. in between mm -hmm. when when those two things happen yeah um and that one had it was a, her debut novel and so it had gotten a lot of buzz um so i heard about it like months before it came out and in between those two events that woman who was held captive for years on the back of that guy's property was found. Mm -hmm. And so it was like a totally case of like life yeah. imitating art um, yeah. or art imitate. I, I don't know. Yeah. It, was, yeah. it was like, Oh my God. So it, it suddenly those, became a rip from the headlines book, even yeah. though it was, even written though it was written before. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this one is, um, survival, vanishing travelers, serial killer, like that kind of intensity happening, dark roads, I'm sure like somebody gets lost. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't, I, like I said, I haven't read it yet, but it's one of those, yeah. You're. it's gonna be like a tense read and I love those. Yeah. Like, I'm really, really into those right now. So. And what's the name of the first one? Um, Still Missing. Still Missing. So if you that sounds intriguing to you, but you don't wanna wait till August. Still missing would be a. And I would recommend like any of her books. They're they're yeah. all very good. Um, yeah, yeah, very very good. Nice. Uh, my next one is called "Nobody, Somebody, Anybody" by Kelly McClory. Um, and this is another one that's a little bit on the quirky side, I suppose. Maybe less quirky. But it's, I would say it would be for fans of Atessa Moshfig. If anybody's read Eileen or My Year of Rest and Relaxation, um, My Year of Rest and Relaxation came out well before the pandemic. Um, but it's about a woman who just decides she is not going to do anything for a year. Um, <laughs> and so I would I just like that idea. You know, so I would, and but her, I mean, her books also, the main characters tend to, Atessa Moshfig, tend to not be. They're not like super likable um, in the way that you tend to have a, expect a protagonist to be. Um, and so nobody, somebody, anybody kind of reminded me of that. Um, it's melancholy. I think it's earnest without being like, without trying to be. Um, I think people from being in book clubs, I think people would complain about a book like this because the main character isn't very likable necessarily. They don't want to be friends with the character. Uh, it's a lot about sadness and loneliness and um, not a lot happens. And you just, I think some people might have a hard time rooting for this character, but I, I, I like books like that. Um, and so the, the plot is she's wor working as a chambermaid on a yacht while trying to study for e her EMT exam. But for a lot of the books, she's just kind of detached and there's a lot of introspection. And um, anyway, nobody, somebody, anybody, the cover has like a, a paint, like a woman in a painting, like being like mm -hmm. a chambermaid or something like that. And, um, but like I said, if you've ever read Eileen or My Year of Rest and Relaxation, I would recommend this. Okay. Um, one book that you've talked about a couple of times this year because you read it was um, Final Girl Support Group. Mm -hmm. This book is recommended for fans of that book. Mm -hmm. So um, it's called My Heart is a Chainsaw. Yes. Um, <laughs> 
yes. which is just a lovely title. Um, it's by Stephen Graham Jones. Mm -hmm. um, the character, the main character, is obsessed with slasher movies, but she watches them not so much for the scariness, but to prepare herself for this kind of thing happening and mm -hmm. like how she will survive. And when things start, strange things start happening in her town, she's convinced like a massacre is about to happen. Uh -huh. So it's that story. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't know what happens. I don't know. Right. Is, but I know that yes. she has big fan of slasher films and prepared yes. for whatever comes. So I'm I have heard about that and heard good things about it. And his previous book, I believe, was called Only Good Indians and also has a lot of really good reviews and feedback. I have it as an ebook. I actually purchased it. It was like a deal of the day for like a dollar ninety nine or something. So I have the ebook, but I haven't read it of only good Indians. So um, um I've been wanting to read the Final Girl Support Group, and I was looking to see if it was available. And of course, it's not. Yeah. It's got a wait list. But um, a different book came up, just Final Girls yes. by Riley. Riley. Yeah. And I was like, I'll read that one. Yeah. So I read. <laughs> I read that one. Well, he um, has a new one that just came out, Survive the Night. Riley yes. Sager Riley, does? Yes, Survive mm -hmm. the Night just came out. I'm on the wait list for that. Can't okay. wait to get it. And it was also one of those, yeah. right now I'm just really into like these like thriller kind of things. Like yeah. the suspense, like what's happening. Yeah. So um, if you liked Final Girls by Riley Sager, My Heart is a Chainsaw would be a good one. Yes. Did, did you like Final Girls? I did. I really liked it. And nice. I will I will say I did not see the end coming. Like okay. it was one of those nice. Not what I was expecting at all. Yeah. I, I, but I think that was on purpose. I think you were kind of led to believe it was going to be something different. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, I've heard good things about all of those. That makes me very excited. I'm definitely expanding my reading. Yeah. My reading parameters by reading more of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really enjoying it. So, my next book is those other two I know don't have like a wide, like I liked reading them, but I know that probably a lot of people <laughs> wouldn't necessarily like that. A lot happens and the characters are weird. But this one, Mrs. March by Virginia F E I T O Fato. Um, it comes out in August, and to pull you in, I will say that there's a big blurb from Elizabeth Moss, who has already optioned the rights for the movie, and will be playing Mrs. March in it, and the book is not even out yet. Um, it's a paranoid, propulsive, and compulsive suspense story. The plot is that Mrs. March, her husband is an author, an acclaimed literary author, and her his most recent book, she begins to suspect right from the very first page, she's suspecting that his most recent book that just came out that has this very unlikable, ugly, terrible character is based on her. Yes. And then she totally falls apart. She is the most unreliable narrator I've ever encountered and a sea of unreliable narrators because there's like never a moment where she was reliable and now has become, I just. I enjoy an unreliable narrator. So I will have to check that one out. The whole thing is a mess and the cover is hands in like these mint green gloves. Um, and it's called Mrs. March and it does, it takes place in New York, but I will say, because when I was reading some reviews of it, when I, when I was looking at it, um, some people seem, seem to have pro troubles with wondering what time, what time it takes period, what time period, time period it takes. Um, it is set in New York, but it feels like an old fashioned New York, but it doesn't also doesn't feel like an old fashioned New York. And the, I read an interview with the author and she's like, well, that was intentional. I just cobbled together in New York that sounded like sounded like New York to me that had, you know, these highlights that make me think of New yeah. York and it's not, no one's pulling out a, an iPhone, but mm -hmm. it's also not clearly in the fifties. And so anyway, okay. reader be warned. We're never going to know. The, the gloves made me think it was like 20s, 40s, yeah. like somewhere. I don't, I don't me know. Too. Somewhere in there. Me too. But I think it can be any time. And I think that was intentional on the part of the okay. narrator and not, or on part of the author and not like a flaw in the book. Like I couldn't figure it out or you didn't define. I think she just intentionally was like, I just made New York and I didn't date it with okay. technology. That's, that's interesting because yeah. like, <laughs> cell phones have just become such a part of our life that they're integrated into stories now. So well, of course, yeah. the batteries die. The battery's always dead. I know, right? Um, 
one that I have been hearing a lot about, um, it's by TJ Newman. It's mm -hmm. called Falling. Um, like I, I just, I've been hearing a lot of buzz about this book. Yeah. Um, it's about a pilot who is given this, um, he has to make the, the choice of either crashing the plane that he is flying with like 200 people on board or his family is going to be murdered. Um, and Lord. so it's just like, I, I don't know anything other than that, except like on the cover, there's like a plane falling. Yes, I think I can picture, and aren't the letters kind of long? The letters are like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so everything is like falling. Yeah. So I need you to believe maybe the plane guy, he chooses that route, but I don't know. Um, right. That's not, so, a, not a great choice, not a good position. To no, be. no, not at all. But mm -hmm. um, I'm sure he finds a way to save his family and the and the plane, plane passengers. One can hope. One can hope. Or um, neither, or they all, they all die. <laughs> or it's just fake, I don't know. <laughs> but yes, it's supposed to be like, gripping like, yeah that's what's gonna happen next kind of story and so. there's like such a specific level such an altitude of drama to something that takes place on a plane right. like when there, it just because it's a capsule it's like a locked room mystery circumstance it's a race against the clock circumstance it's all those things and also just like by nature you're up in the air you're in danger just by the nature of being up there yes yes it just adds that element of hope helplessness to yes. the two because yes. there's nowhere to go there's nowhere to run there's no way to get out of this situation yes. Um, yes. so yeah and i think that even though we've had we've had air travel for so many decades i do think we also like we still when authors write about that they still kind of draw on even like the when you're up there who knows what could happen like right. almost like yeah. a supernatural like because you're and because people don't really understand how it works. How does no. something this heavy stay up right. in the air? Like, right. it seems like magic. Yes, yes. And I think that we still feel that a little bit. Yeah. When we, and it, like, lends itself to things like this. Like, you yes. might pass into a different dimension if you're up there. Who knows? Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, my next thing, I, I know we're over time. When are we not? But um, there was a book called A Psalm for the... Psalm P S A L M for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers, and it's apparently going to be a series called Monk and Robot. This is oh, Monk okay. and Robot number one, and I would describe this as like a peaceful sci-fi meditation on what it means to be human. It's almost kind of like a different version with a different end goal and stuff, but it's something like The Alchemist, where the plot is less important than what mm -hmm. what's being said about human nature or whatever. Yeah. Um, and the general plot is that it's been centuries since robots gained self-awareness, laid down their tools and absconded to the wilderness. And so life is much different on earth now. It is much more nature-based. And our main character is someone called called Sibling Dex. They are a monk, they're a tea monk. And so their calling is to basically make they have like this traveling cart and they make tea for people and the people come up and they make them a blend of tea that's like suited to this person's distress or concern. Okay. Um, it's not a drug. Nobody does that for me. Yeah. Yeah. They're, that's very, it's, not, it's just the, it's the care and concern. They listen to their problems. They make them, you know, a special blend of herbs that's going to soothe them. And then, you know, the person's on their way and then he meet or sibling Dex meets a robot and um, the robot is tasked with finding out what do people need. And so I think the series is going to go on to have the two of them together trying to figure out what people need. And again, it's one of those things where the story is a little less important than the conversations that they have about it. But um, I saw it repeatedly in almost every single review described as cozy. So if you need, and it's short. So if you, uh, sci-fi things could be, you know, a thousand pages. It's not sci-fi in that way it's like 160 pages and it's just okay. a cozy pleasant warm cup of tea type of book that i'm always fascinated by books with like robots and self-awareness like that's yeah. one of those things that just 
it's fascinating to think about. Yeah. So that is one that I will have to check out because I didn't realize that. Yeah. I was about. So yeah. yeah. And I think that that will come into play too as the books go on. Like the robots did become self aware, but they are not human also. Mm -hmm. So, what what's the difference between consciousness and humanity? And yeah. Yeah. Just like with the advances in AI that are happening and like self driving car, like it's just like. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just like, how do they make choices? Because they do. Like, you know, machines make choices yeah. now. And it's just, it's very interesting to me how that yeah. happens and what factors into the choices they make versus choices we make. You know? Right. If, are we, we're going to leave it on like such a weirdly deep right. note today. <laughs> um, but yeah, are we, running on an algorithm the same way a computer is running on an algorithm, but ours is just chemical and, you know, environmental or whatever. And how is our algorithm different than those AI algorithms? And Very interesting. I don't know. I don't know why. Different than what we normally talk about. If you're joining us for the first time today, don't worry. I don't know that. That. <laughs> Discuss uh, such heavy metaphysical topics, but... <laughs> We probably ought to call it. I think we should leave it there. There's not much to say beyond that. Um, yeah. Next week, we'll delve into free will. <laughs> we won't. <laughs> we won't. We will keep away. it light. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for being back with us today. Thanks for sticking around while we went a little bit over. And uh, we will see you next week. See you.